All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in. Let me make sure we're up. All right. All right, yeah, we're up. Come on, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Grace and peace be unto each and every one of you. Good morning to you. Good to have you on. I'm going to get ready to send my text out here in just a moment. Bobby Curry, good morning. Melissa Stewart, good morning. Uh, let me see who else we got coming in. Jamaica, Dan Jones, good morning. Evelyn Torres, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let me grab the link here and send this out to everybody so they can get the text message. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in, everybody. Go ahead and share the link that's on your screen as quickly as you can. Let's go ahead and invite somebody uh, to join us on this morning. Uh, I apologize. I'm just a few moments late coming in. Been moving some things around, trying to redo some things with our studio. And so we are here. We're here. We're here. We're here. Good morning to you all. Uh, I'm going to greet you here in just a moment, but let me just uh, get the link here so I can make sure I text everybody. I apologize for it being a little dark behind me. Again, we're redoing some things here, uh, but nevertheless, we are on. The most important thing is the word of the Lord. And so come on in. Let's take a few moments to share the link that's on your screen this morning. Let's invite somebody to join us in the presence of the Lord. All right. Let me see if I can get this up here. Hallelujah. And I'll cover a few things with you all this morning before we get started. Got a lot going on in a short period of time, but nevertheless, we are still believing God for great things. All right. Come on in, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Continue to comment. Uh, again, I'm trying to get all this running up. We moved some things around here, and so I just want to make sure I have everything set up the way I need to set it up. And there is the text. So the text just went out to a few of you all. Uh, some of you are already on that have gotten the text, and that's okay. Thank you, Evelyn, for those stars this morning. Appreciate those faithful stars of you doing that, sending that up this morning. And so grace and peace be unto you this morning, uh, as always, for the love of sending up those stars. All right. So we got that going this morning. Uh, I can see you guys coming in this morning. Mother Cora Hannah is on. Heather Cross is on. Teresa is on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lakeisha Davis is on. Uh, Y'all Paul is on. Good morning. Rose Lee. Good morning. Kim P uh, Pitts. Good morning. They're on YouTube. God bless you. Uh, Joanne Farrell, good to have you on this morning. Uh, Charisma Divine, good to have you on this morning. Uh, Shea Brandon, Robert Lewis, good morning. Karen Williams, Katina, good morning. Uh, Tanya Crook, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, let me see who else. Violet Jarvis Bridges, good morning. Good to have you on. Blessings unto you this morning. And to Lasagna Youngblood, thank you for those stars this morning. To Kara Wright, good to see you this morning. Bobby Raptor, Jane Humans, good morning. Mona Wilson, good morning, my dear. Good to have you on. Debbie Lipke, good morning. Thank you for those 500 stars. Mona Wilson, I see you there coming in. Shamika Thomas, good morning. Glenda Harris, Lisa Clark, good morning. Uh, Dean Elsrick, good to have you on this morning. Mother Glenda Harris, good morning, good to see you. And to Johnny uh, Cochran Jr., good morning, good to have you on. God bless you. Suzette Smith, good morning, my dear, good to have you on. Veronica Brooks, good to have you on. Grace and peace be unto you this morning. Brother Leonard Rucker, TJ, good to have you on. Sandy Murray, good morning, good morning, good morning. Ah, thank you, Sandy. She says yesterday's service was powerful. To God be all the glory. Amen. We had a great time yesterday in worship, and we are so grateful for the things that the Lord is doing. Angie, good morning. God bless you. Uh, let me see. Teresa Bowser, good morning. All of you that's coming in on YouTube, we're so grateful to have you on this morning. Grace and peace be unto each and every one of you. Uh, let me see. Nari still standing. Good morning, my dear daughter. Good to have you on. Jackie Robinson, good morning. Yes, Grand Rising 1000 Commanders. 
Come on, we're believing God for that and plus some. Good to have you on this morning. Uh, let me see. Mary Whitaker, Yolanda uh, Holmes, good to see you this morning. <clears throat> Grace and peace be unto you this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. Like a frog just got in my throat all of a sudden. Nevertheless, we're here. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, Joseph P. Angle, good to have you on, my brother. C. Nuez Fox, good morning, good morning, good morning. And to Mary Sanders, good morning. Tamika Brown, uh, Tamiko Brown, good to have you on. Jesus is Lord. I love that name. Uh, they're on YouTube. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, Dorothy Burgess, thank you for those stars this morning. Kia Colum, good morning. Good to have you on. Uh, grace and peace to you, Laverne Jackson, Raymond Drago. Uh, let me see. Brenda Cunningham, good morning. And Jacqueline Fobbs. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, all of you that's coming in, let's go ahead and share. Let's go ahead and invite others this morning. You can go ahead and start letting me know where you're watching from. Connie Grant, good to have you on, daughter. God bless you. Uh, Janine Hogan, good to see you, daughter. God bless you. Vernell Charles Reed, good morning. Gladys Gilts, good morning. Bridget Campbell, good morning. Uh, Harriet Gordon, good morning. All of you that's coming in, Glenda Harris, good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in, folks. Let's go ahead and just share uh, that link that's on your screen. Betty Monroe, how are you doing this morning? Lakeisha Davis, I just called you there, but great blessings to you. All of you that's joining in. Jordan, God bless you. They're on TikTok. God bless you. Those of you that's watching from Dallas, I see you coming in. Dallas is in the house. Chris Dale, good morning. Good to have you on. Adrian Andrews, good morning. Betty Henderson Lee, good morning. Amen. Uh, Melanie, I think that is on TikTok. Good morning. Good, God, this, good to see you and God bless you, Stephanie. Good morning. Uh, Vanessa Lane. Good morning. Lawrence Jackson. Good morning. Keisha Nicole. Linda Scott. So many of you that's joining in right now. I see Detroit, Michigan is in the house. Come on, let me know where you're watching from on this morning, where you're tuning in from. Florida's in the house. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And Betty Parson, thank you for those stars this morning. Thank you, Janine, for sharing the link that's on your screen this morning. God bless you. All of you that's coming in, we're so grateful for you tuning in. So grateful for you sharing the link uh, on your screen this morning. Bless Free Right, how are you doing this morning, my dear daughter? God bless you. Amen. Linda Scott, all of you that's on YouTube. Tanya Francisco, good morning. Wanda Penn, good morning. Sister Walker, uh, all of you that's really tuning in from all across the world, we're so grateful for you being with us. And we want you to go ahead and just take a few moments to share. Again, I do apologize for coming on just a few moments late uh, and sending out the link just a little bit late there. I've been moving some things around. You can tell my background is different. And so uh, redoing my whole entire studio here. And so it's going to be a little while before I get everything together. But know that we are still going to continue to have command your day. Right now, I just got my computer set up again on the other side where I'm doing things at and so it's just my computer and my monitors and my lights and so I have to get some other lights and things installed to brighten up my room and all these other types of things uh, so be patient with me this week as we're getting these things together to perfect uh, command your day and make things better amen uh, and then also I do want to let you know guys know we're still in the midst uh, working out our text messaging system. And so uh, many of you probably have been with me uh, through the transition of switching things over because our other company that we was with, where I can text everybody and it comes directly to my phone and things like that. I didn't have to log into the internet uh, on a computer. Uh, they was raising the price to almost a thousand dollars and so uh, we had to begin to switch to something else that was a little bit cheaper getting us about four hundred dollars a month but it is not doing what i needed to do uh, and so the saying that you get what you pay for is absolutely true uh, because we send out over i think they calculated last year was six hundred thousand text messages per year uh, that we was actually sending out because we're actually receiving your prayer request, texting you back, praying for your prayer request and all these different types of things. And so we have requested to get our number ported back. And so some of you this past week, I may have missed your text message. If I did not get your text message, uh, I have to actually get to the computer and open them up because they're not coming directly to my phone the way they used to. Uh, and letting me really be notified just like regular text messaging uh, system is set up and some of you have not been able to receive any of the text messages uh, and so just give us a little bit of time uh, to get everything ported back over and get things situated uh, we're just believing God for great and mighty things to take place so we can begin to really just push the gospel of the kingdom of God forward uh, because that's how important this thing is to the body of Christ and so you guys just bear with us I know we got a lot going on uh, in a short period of time but I do apologize if you text me and I did not get your text message 
uh, and did not get back to you over the past three to four days uh, because they're in the midst of porting some things over. Anytime you porting to try to keep your same number, uh, sometimes you lose people and lose some text messages inside the transition. And so once we get everything set back up, I'll, I'll start putting the number back up. I'll start letting people know uh, that everything is back working so you'll be able to text me directly, all right? And so we're just so grateful to be with you this morning. So let's get started in the word. Uh, got a lot of things we have to get done today. Again, we're working on uh, switching some things around here. And so I hope you guys can hear and see me clear enough this morning. If you can hear and see clearly, just go ahead and let me know. Hey, Sandrine, I see you coming in. God bless you. Uh, go ahead and just type on the screen. You can hear clearly. You can see clearly. Uh, if we need to work on some things, let me know what that is. And we'll, I'll always go back and watch the replay anyway to find out what we kind of need to work on. Uh, but we're expanding some things where I can actually uh, have all multiple platforms kind of linked. So I'm looking directly at one camera. And so it's going to take me a little while to get that done and to get things done in decency and in order. But I see a lot of you saying I can hear and see clearly. Amen. Praise the Lord. So grateful for that. Uh, and so grateful for all of you all that's coming in and that's sharing. All right. So let's do it this morning. You know what I'm getting ready to see. Where's my boy? Where's Kerry this morning? Kerry, let me know if you're on this morning because you was over here at the studio knowing what was going on, what we're doing. And so the room that we have switched to, this is the first time I'm saying it. This is the first time I'm releasing it. And I hope you watching to receive it. Come on. You know what I'm getting ready to say and you know what I need you to do. Let's do it right now for the first time. Come on. Let's send it up all, all. Let's send it up boldly this morning. Let's send it up with a powerful, powerful praise. Let me see the hearts. Let me see the lights going crazy on the screen this morning. Why? Because we are driving the devil crazy with our praise, with our worship, with our decree, and with our expectation. And we are in great expectation that God is going to do a great, great miracle for us today. Come on, how many of you really believe that on today? God is going to work a great, great miracle for you. God has something supernatural in store for you. Come on, I want you to get excited this morning. Come on, no matter how your weekend turned out, no matter what may be going on in in your life. I want you to get excited about the things of God. I want you to get ready uh, for what the Lord is about to do because I'm telling you, many of you got to begin to understand the Lord is about to do some great and mighty things in your life. We are literally on the brink of supernatural miracles being released for those of us that have been in position to receive them. Come on, just say it this morning. I believe it. I believe that God is about to do something crazy for me. I believe that I'm not just going through these attacks. I'm not just going through this battle. I'm not just facing the things that I am facing just to be facing. In them. I know that there is something that the Lord is about to release in my life that the devil does not want to come to pass. And so whatever that thing is that the enemy is trying to afflict you with, whatever it is that the enemy is trying to attack you with, come on, I want you to understand this morning, God is changing things for you. God is shifting things on your behalf. And there is a positive change that is about to be released unto you. And so those of you that have your 365 day devotional through command your day, you'll know that I'm already talking about today's devotional uh, because the Lord really been just dropping these things into my spirit. Even it has, even it, uh, as we read the devotion, it's been lining up perfectly uh, with what the spirit of the Lord has been saying to the body of believers. And so as we flow, in this, uh, flow into this this morning, I want you to begin to be into a place. Thank you for those gifts on TikTok. I want you to just begin to understand that there's some things that God is about to do greatly in your life. Joseph Nally, good to have you on this morning. God bless you. And so as you begin to position yourself for greater, position yourself for more. And that's what I really want to begin to share with you this morning, because there is so much more that God has in store for you. I want you to go ahead and just type that comment that on somebody's comment this morning and say, there is so much more that the Lord has in store for you. Come on. This is not the season that God is going to continue to give you little. There is so much more that God wants to release to you. There's so much more blessing, so much more healing in your body, so much more the anointing that God God is really about to release upon you as the believer. And so a lot of times when you are getting ready to shift to another level in God, the enemy will always come to frustrate you. The enemy will always come to make you think that things are not progressing for you, that things are not about to happen and break forth for you. But come on, you got to begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, today is the day that everything is changing for me. Today is the day that God has a crazy blessing for me. I may be going through in my body, maybe going through in my finances, maybe going through some type of attack in my life, but my attacks does not begin 
to announce uh, uh, any type of downfall, but they come to announce a great shifting to the next level. And so as you are encouraging somebody this morning, letting them know that things are about to change for them, I want you to receive that even for yourself because God says this is the season, this is the time that it's about to be a positive change for you, not a negative change. Come on, can you say that? Everybody type that on the screen this morning. A positive change is being released for me. And we want to come from the scripture this morning, Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, very familiar passage of scripture. But this is the scripture reference this morning that we've been uh, really talking about several different times uh, throughout the course of our live stream, throughout the course of Command Your Day. Amen. You have heard me begin to talk about this particular scripture. And I believe that today is the perfect day uh, to begin to read this scripture, to let it begin to ignite some things in your spirit. Come on, those of you that just jumped on, go ahead and hit that share button really, really quickly. Uh, again, I want you to share as quickly as you can. I'm uh, going to jump off just a little bit early today and listen, the Lord just kind of flows uh, because again, there's some things we're trying to get in order uh, and get some things done quickly as possible. So I want you to share the word with somebody this morning because command your day is so important to many people all across the world. And so we're talking about Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 out of the King James Version, the New King James Version. And many of you know this particular scripture, but if we're going to begin to dissect it just a little bit more so it can begin to make sense as it relates to what you are dealing with in your personal life. And Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord and it says thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope and I just want to pause right there again many of you have heard this many of you have uh, confessed this over your own life you've decreed this over your own life but the Bible says for he knows the thoughts that he thinks toward us and so you got to begin to understand this the Bible said that God what thinks towards us and so that tells me right there that even though the God that we serve, watch this, this is about to get real good. I can feel something pulling on me. Uh, he, even though he knows uh, our end from the beginning, even though he knew us since he formed us in his, in our what, what mother's womb, this is the same Jeremiah that Jesus says, I knew you when I formed you in your mother's womb. He knew the end. He knew the beginning. But here's the key word that has me uh, really just questioning some things here about how much God really is concerned about me and not quite questioning in a negative way but questioning in a good way because the bible tells me for i know the thoughts that i think towards you all right well here's the question why does god have to think concerning me when he has already known known me from the time he formed me in my mother's womb so that means what god is always consistently concerned about you Oh, this is good right here. Come on, you are always on God's mind. And a lot of times the enemy will make us think that we are not on God's mind. God is not concerned about what we're going through. Does God even know that I'm struggling right now? Does God even know uh, what I'm facing right now? Does he know that I'm going through in my body, that I'm going through financially? Yes, he does. He knows all of these things, but it just may not be the time for him to intervene yet. It may just not be the time for him to step in yet because a lot of times God God will begin to wait until we get out of the way uh, and really just begin to allow the process of transformation to take place before he steps in and brings the revelation. I've said this before. A lot of time God creates a situation in order to bring forth revelation. I'm going to say that again. A lot of times God creates a situation in order to bring forth revelation. And so the Bible tells us here, he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. And so we got to begin to understand this. If the Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 29 that he knows the thoughts that he what thinks towards us what types of things are God thinking about us he's thinking about the things that I'm about to give you next and I think a lot of times we think that God doesn't think that God doesn't speak that God doesn't know yes he is a spirit come on but we know that we are very much his prized possessions here's what he says I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord and he says they are what <clears throat> Excuse me. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Now watch this. This is what God, the Lord, is constantly thinking about us. Thoughts of peace. He wants to begin to always think of ways to keep you in a peaceful state. He always wants to begin to think of ways he can make your life easier and not of evil to give you what? A future and a hope. So the question is, is God concerned about my future? The answer is yes. Come on, watch this. I'm helping somebody this morning. He says here, there are thoughts of not evil and to give you a future 
and a hope. Now, here's the thing I want to break this down. And this is why a lot of times on command your day, I just take one scripture and just stop right there because there's literally so much meat just in one scripture. And a lot of times we preach it and we just move on and we really don't get all the meat off of this one particular scripture. And so here, I want you to understand, he says that he's thinking towards us. And this is what the Lord has said the, in the thoughts that he thinks is of peace not of evil. And here's the next part after that comma. He says what? To give you a future and a hope. And so what is God thinking about? He's thinking about us in order to give us something. Well, wait a minute. The Bible also tells me that freely he gives us all things, which means he has already given us what? Authority. There's things that the Lord has already given unto us. But guess what? There is so much more. Come on, somebody type in all caps the word more. There is so much more that the Lord wants to give to you. And that's why you got to understand, even though there's things that the Lord has already given unto us, the more we stay in his presence, the more we seek ye first the kingdom of God, according to Matthew 6 and 33, the more God adds unto us. What does the Bible tell us? He daily loadeth us with what? Benefits. And so every day that you have breath in your body, every day that the Lord wakes you up, he is, he, his desire is to what? Load you with benefits. And so there is more. Come on, I see you guys typing more on the screen. I see you, Debbie Angel. I see you, uh, Kay Bowie. I see you there. All of you, Patrick Morris. Come on, all of you that's typing more on the screen. There is so much more that the Lord wants to release into your hand. There is so much more. Let me help somebody that would grab this prophetically. There is so much more that the Lord wants to trust you with. My question is, can the Lord trust you with more? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Can the Lord trust you with more increase? Can the Lord trust you with so much more that he desires to give unto you? And here's the problem why many of us have not received more is because the Lord cannot trust us with more. Come on. Yes, God wants to step into your situation. Yes, he wants to begin to change everything concerning your life, bring peace into your life. But the question is, and the reality is, are we really ready for what God wants to do? Is our faith in alignment with his faith? Is our will in alignment with his will? Is our vision in alignment with the vision and the will of the Lord? And so there's sometimes that God says, I, I, I want to bless them. I want to begin to enlarge their territory. But right now is not the time because if I do it prematurely, it's going to cause them more pain. It's going to cause them some chaos. It's going to cause them some depression because I need them to be strong enough to handle what I am doing. And even as I ministered on yesterday. Some of you uh, caught the live stream. If you did not catch it, I encourage you to go back and watch it. There's so much more that God wants to give unto you, but you're going to need some help. Here's the thing. The Lord says, start looking for helpers. Come on. I know you've been in a place where you've had the wrong help. You've had the bad type of help, but the Lord just released upon my spirit strongly on yesterday. He says, I'm sending people in your life that genuinely want to help you. Come on. Can somebody just go ahead and praise the Lord right there? and believe by faith that the Lord is sending you some genuine help. Come on, not the type of help that's going to show up just to get something from you. Not the type of help that's just going to take from you. Not the type of help that just wants to begin to be around you because of who you know. No, the Lord says, I'm getting ready to send you some help, some people that's going to celebrate you and not just tolerate you. Come on. I wish I had somebody that would shout right there. God says, I'm getting ready to send you some help some people that's not going to be drainers and not people that's designed to empty you but that's going to help refill you come on anybody need somebody some people like that in your life somebody just go ahead and say lord send the helpers come on i hear the lord saying today for many of you that help is on the way come on i prophetically release that over all of you that are watching all of you that will share the link that's on your screen right now help is on the way for you and god said it's going to be the right type of hell because the type of blessing that God is about to release in your life you're going to need somebody to help you load this thing up 
Because the Bible said yesterday, as we talked about it, your nets are about to break. You're going to have to signal for some help. Come on. God is about to expand you. God is literally about to fill your net. Come on. I feel the Lord speaking to me right here. The Lord is about to fill up your net. Can you decree and declare that my net going to be so filled that it ain't going to be able to hold what God is blessing me with? Come on. I'm going to need somebody to come and help me because my net is about to break. Come on. There's some things that God is about to step in and begin get your calls to overtake you and you're going to have to get that chip off of your shoulder and begin to signal for some people on the other side to come and help you carry the blessing because what's on you is going to be enough to bless you and everybody around you here's the oh I thank you Holy Spirit here's what I heard the Lord say this blessing is going to be enough that you don't have to worry about it because here's the thing here's why you don't signal for help because you need all of it for yourself. Woo! You can't afford to give none away. But here's what the Lord says. He says, I'm getting ready to bless you in such a capacity of overflow that you're going to have to just signal to give some stuff away. Oh, uh, Can you go ahead and prophesy to yourself and say, I'm going to have so much that it's going to be enough for me to give away, enough for me to put away, and enough to share with others. That's my prayer for you this morning, that the Lord will begin to enlarge you to the capacity that you will have so much more that you won't even have enough storehouse to store it. Here's what he says. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. God does not want to do evil towards you. He says, I want to better yet. Here's the comma. And here's the next part of the verse to give you a future. Have you ever been in your, a place in your life where you feel like you don't even have a future? You feel like you don't even have a reason to live. Come on, those are all tactics of the enemy that the enemy tries to use against you. Come on, I need everybody to share this really, really quickly as we get ready to go into the devotion because I feel the Holy Spirit uh, really just about to drop some things on you like an atomic bomb. God bless you, uh, Natalie Nash, for those stars this morning. I appreciate the stars and appreciate the gifts. He says to give you a future. Many of you, the Lord says, I'm going to give you a new future. What does that mean? God has the ability to rewrite your future. Whatever was in store for you, whatever the enemy had planned for you, whatever the enemy had set up for you, the Lord says, I am changing your future. He says, I want to give you a new future. Come on, you thought you had a future in that, in that bad relationship, that abusive relationship, but the Lord says, that was not your future. So what did the Lord do? The Lord gave you another future. He says, I'm giving you another future that's tied with what? Hope. Do you ever wonder when you read that word, have you under, have you ever just really thought about God? Why are you going to give me a future and a hope? Shouldn't I already have these things? Because sometimes the enemy and situations in life do what? They, they, they destroy our hope. They destroy our future. And so what the Lord is about to do in this next season of your life is give you a future and a hope. What is the hope? The hope that things can begin to be turned around. The hope that things can turn in my favor. The hope that things are going to begin to get better and not worse. Come on. Somebody say, as long as I got hope, I can make it. Can you say that this morning? As long as I have hope, I can make it. Here's what the devotion says this morning. It says, today I come before you with a heart full of determination. Come on, I want you to go ahead and just type that on the screen this morning. Say, I am determined. I have determination. Come on, I'm not losing my determination. I said, I have determination. I am determined to not fail. I am determined to not quit. I am determined to not give up. Come on, can you just, can you just say this for somebody right now? I feel the Lord saying this. I am determined to grow. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Can you say that this morning? I am determined to grow. I'm not going to let my situation get the best of me. I'm not going to let what people said about me uh, make me get to a place where I feel like that I don't belong, that I don't fit in, that I can't grow and that I can't begin to do certain things just because of where I grew up and where I came from and the place that God has me now. No, the Lord says be determined to do something different. The Lord says you are about to be 
begin to show the world your uniqueness. There's something that God put inside of you that he didn't put in everybody else. God, ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why he says you don't have to be a copycat. Just go ahead and be you because God says, I anointed you for greatness. I anointed you to do great things. You may not be able to do it like everybody else, but guess what? You're going to do it better than anybody else can try to manipulate and do it like you. Why? Because God says you are about to operate in your authenticity. He says here, today I come before you with a heart full of determination and of hope. Come on. So, so not only am I determined, I have hope. Come, come on. Can you just say that this morning? I still have hope that things are going to work in my favor. I still have hope that things are going to work. I still have hope that things are going to begin to break through for me. Come on. I need you to say that this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, Sandrine, that may be your phone. Yo, okay, I just got Sandrine's text. Yeah, that's, oh yeah, we long past that. Okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. Okay, praise the Lord. I thought somebody was texting me. It was my wife sending me something and Sandrine said no sound. We got sound though, Sandrine. Thank you. I just saw your text. It was a little bit late. I was already flowing. I apologize, but thank you uh, for being there for me. And so I, I got determination. I have hope. And let me tell somebody this. I need to say this real quick and I need about 500 of you to share right now with two people. All hope is not lost. Come on, I, I, I got to pause for a moment right here and say that to somebody, speak that to somebody's spirit. All hope is not lost. There's somebody you're watching me, you feel like all hope is lost. You feel like you ain't got nothing to live for. You feel like you have no reason to be existing. Come on, the devil is a liar. Come on, and the Lord really just had me this, this past weekend and even in service, I had to pray against that spirit. The Lord showed me a great spirit of suicide. And I want you guys to pray with me in the area uh, of that regard. Uh, because if we don't pray, and I'm not saying that our prayers do not work. I'm saying that we have to pray. But there, even though we pray sometimes, there are certain things that we cannot prevent. The Lord showed me a great wave of suicide spirits. Which means a lot of people taking their own life. Uh, feeling like they cannot make it. They cannot survive. And, and I saw all just literally uh, a group one one just one just section of this thing that's happening is because of the way things are increasing a lot of people uh saying you know things are going up the the the, pli the price of certain things they cannot afford certain things and so it's going to get to the place where they don't even want to begin to live and exist and many of you are, again I, when i prophesy things like this it's not so that you can prove that i'm accurate uh, i want you to pray against these things because i always pray that i am wrong and i appreciate those of you that's been praying with the children and of course, we have been seeing a lot of children's uh, deaths and things like that from the time the Lord showed me this. But I believe that our prayers have begun to cover a lot because just as many times as we've heard uh, death of children, we've also heard uh, the hand of God covering children. Many people, their children was in accidents. I'm talking about bullets coming and literally could have killed everybody in the vehicle, but nobody died. I'm talking about because of the righteous prayers. And so I want you to really be in prayer against the spirit of suicide. The Lord really showed me this as well because the, the, the enemy is speaking to a lot of people and we want the voice of the Lord Jesus to be the prominent voice in these people's life and not the voice of the enemy. And so I want to tell somebody that this morning, all hope is not lost. Come on, God has not abandoned you. Come on, I, you may not have a pastor, you may not have a church, but listen, and I may not be your pastor and you're watching me, guess what? I don't care if I'm your pastor or not. I'm not caught up in titles. I'm not caught up in uh, all of that types of things. Listen, if I can help pray you off the ropes, if I can help stand in the gap for you, I'll do it because I understand that I'm a part of the bigger scope, the body of Christ. And that's the problem now. That's why many of us are not excelling because we're too busy being caught up on who we are affiliated with. Are we, can we just be affiliated with the body of Christ? Come on, it doesn't matter what denomination you affiliated with. It doesn't matter what church you affiliated with because guess what? The church makes up the ecclesia which is the what body of christ and until we start thinking bigger than the four walls of our churches we're going to always be in a place where the enemy is beginning to advance in our lives and so i'm at a place where i'm looking beyond the four walls of breakthrough harvest church and we get to the place where we say well they're not my people they're not my i'm not assigned to them and i get it you got to begin to operate and flow where you are assigned but i'm talking about not at the expense 
of somebody dying on your watch that came to you to help them and you ignored them because they was not a member of your church, but they was a member of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is the season we got to begin to have discernment. Are you listening to me? And I see some of you commenting on a lot of people's comment uh, because some people are confirming this word even now. Some of you are saying, yes, I felt like that. Come on. Yeah, I need y'all to help me intercede for these people because there's so many people watching right now, about 700 people on all these platforms, and I may not can see everybody's comment. And that's why I told you as far as those of you that's connected to Breakthrough Harvest Church online, you may have never set foot in the building, but there's people that's watching on this platform that need your prayers, that need your support. Why? Because I only got two eyes. There's only so many comments I can see. And I need you to be able to help me comment. I need you to be able to help me encourage people on my behalf to say, listen, we're praying for you. I'll let Pastor know your prayer request. We're going to touch and agree. We're going to send it to the innocents. I want you to know that we're here to support you. You may not have your own family support, but command your day is one big family. That's why I get you to shout out where you're watching from, what city you are in. Why? Because you never know who's in your city, who's in your region that you need to connect with, that you can begin to be their lifeline. Are you with me this morning? And so I want to tell somebody that as we begin to go into this, all hope is not lost for you. I don't care what it feels like. I counsel that spirit of suicide in your life, in your family. Whatever the enemy has told you, it is all a lie. God has need of you, and God is very much concerned about you. Here's what it says. I come to you full of determination and hope. Your word in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, it reassures me that you have plans for my life. Come on, can you just go ahead and tell somebody that the Lord has plans for your life. That's why you don't need to take your life. Come on, I need you to tell somebody that this morning. You don't need to take your life because God still has plans for your life. Come on, I know it feels like right now. God doesn't have a plan for you. You're saying, Lord, what do I need to do? I don't understand what I, I should be doing right now. I feel like I'm just existing. I don't even feel like I'm living. I, don't, I, don't, I feel like I should be a lot further along in my life. And when I just said that out of my mouth, I felt the Holy Spirit literally just tug me. Uh, there's many of you that's been saying, Lord, I should be further along in life by now. And I, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord said, many of you are looking on Facebook. You're, you're looking at what other people, the Lord, how God has blessed them and you're saying God why can't I get blessed like that why can't I have what they have the Lord say you can you see, here's the problem you want what they have but God says I want to give you more than what they have the only reason God showed you what they have is so your taste buds could change so that your appetite could change so that your grind level can change come on there's some of you that just need to go start looking at brand new cars I don't care if you can't afford it or not and it's not about material things but some of you your appetite need to change you need to drive through million dollar neighborhoods why so your appetite can change because God says I want you to have the desires of your heart I want you to understand that I do have a plan for your life and your life is not going down your life needs to get better and there are some of you that are saying I should have been further along by now I should have been working there's more money I should be making I, I should be at a better place in my life but I'm still here playing with pennies and rubbing two pennies together and trying to make something happen no the Lord says once you change your confession of faith your lifestyle is going to begin to change you got to begin to have faith to say you know what I'm going after what's mine I'm going after what the Lord wants me to do I'm no longer going to sit here like the leper the four lepers and say why sit here till I die no I'm going into the city and find out what gate what door is about to open for me I'm not going to keep sitting here feeling sorry for myself I'm not going to keep sitting here wishing I had what somebody else had watch this judging what they have and, and can't celebrate with them but I'm getting upset because of how it makes me feel because I'm not in a place yet no don't you let the devil push you into a place like that where you start uh, not celebrating others because of what you don't have no God says when you celebrate others I'm going to give you even more he says I'm working on something big for you too I'm working on something major for you too I just need you to hold on for a little while I need you to keep the faith. I need you to have hope and believe that this thing is going to come to pass for you. Can you go ahead and type on somebody's comment for me and say it's still going to come to pass?
pass for you. Come on, I touch and agree with you this morning that it's still going to come to pass for you. Come on, your broke days are over. Come on, it's coming to pass for you. Your sick days are over. Your days of lack, your days of frustration, your days of never having enough. I decree and I declare over your life that it's coming to an end today. That the spirit of the living God is opening up the gate for you. He's opening up the door for you to have more. He's opening up the atmosphere for you to begin to produce more. Come on, I'm talking about people that's been in great standing with God, right standing, praying unto the Lord, saying, Lord, I've been tithing, I've been sowing, I've been helping others, the less fortunate, the poor, the widows, the orphans. I've been doing all of these things, the great commission, and I'm still going through hell. This is the time that those of you that have begun to uh, uh, honor the Lord with all of your increase, God says, I'm about to increase you. Hear me today. I feel this thing getting ready to happen for many of you. He says, uh, he reassure, that word reassures me that you have plans for my life, plans for a future filled with hope. God sees your future filled, not empty. Here's the thing. When God looks at your future, it is not the same way that you look at your future. God said, I see your future as being filled. I, come on, I need to prophesy to somebody right now. I see your bank account being filled. I see your pantry being filled. I see your gas tank being filled. Or some of y'all saying gas tank, yeah, because there's some people along here, you, you just believe in God for gas to get to work. But I decree and declare today that God is about to stretch your gas. Come on, I decree and declare, oh, I feel the Holy ghost this morning God's about to stretch your gas come on God's come on some of you may just have enough faith for the gas money I decree today that God is about to stretch it for you in the mighty name of Jesus oh I ain't even got the, 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 the halfway part of this devotion and time is getting away come on somebody go ahead and share the link really really quickly it says I declare that I will be an agent of positive change. Come on, somebody say that. I'm going to allow God to use me and make me an agent of positive change. Guided by his persistent love and wisdom. How are you going to begin to reach your, your destination? Through the wisdom of God. And this is the scene that the Lord says, I'm about to give you wisdom. Somebody need to receive that. The Lord is about to give you wisdom on how to begin to maneuver. And that's why the Lord really dropped in my spirit about launching this millionaire boot camp. And for those of you that have become my kingdom paymasters, don't worry, you're getting access to even more of that uh, because I'm really going to pour into you and a lot of these resources you're going to begin to get. But we're doing a millionaire's boot camp where God will begin to give you a strategy on how to tap into the wealth, the kingdom wealth that God has for you. He says in his word, he says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. And so the Millionaire's Boot Camp that we're going to begin to launch is to teach you how to begin to walk in that prosperity that the Lord has for you. And it's not just money, but it's also about how to begin to be healthy, to live in good health, how to never let sickness hold you down. Come on, some of you will say, Pastor, I've never seen you sick. Don't you know that's a wealth of healing? Because I'm a millionaire when it comes to my healing. Are you listening to me? And so these are things that we're going to begin, begin to impart and activate in you when we launch this Millionaire's Boot Camp. I want you to understand that he says, be guided by your persistent love and wisdom. <clears throat> Here's what it says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and verse 6. Thank you for those stars, Kishmadi. It says, You're, you instruct me to trust you with all my heart. Here's the problem where many of us miss it. We don't what? We don't trust the Lord with all of our heart. And that's the prerequisite that we got to trust the Lord with all of our heart, not a half of our heart. And it says, and lean not to our own understanding. Come on. If it was, you got to understand, God will never give you all the details. There's some things that God is not going to begin to share with you because if the God give it all to you, you would not trust him the way you should. Here's what he says. Lean not to your own understanding. Can I just prophesy to somebody this morning and tell you what God is about to do? People around you ain't going to understand it. You yourself ain't even going to know how God done it. You just going to know that he's done it. Woo, my God. As I step out in faith, I am confident that you will direct my path toward what? Opportunities. 
And that's the prayer that I'm releasing for you this morning, that God will begin to release you into new doors of opportunities. There's many of you, God says, get ready because you are about to travel the world. Yes, I said it. And some of you are saying, I don't know how that's going to work. Do you know how half airline tickets is? Do you know how much stuff I got to do? The Lord says, I'm about to open up your spirit to nations. You are no longer going to be confined to your city. The world needs to know your name. Come on, I'm hearing that in the realm of the spirit. Many of you, God is a, oh, let my sick head. The Lord is about to open up doors of wealth in other territory for you. <clears throat> Direct my path towards opportunity to impact my life. And make the world a better place. That's why the Lord is about to do this in your life. Because he's going to use you to make the world a better place. In the midst of hell. In the midst of calamity. In the midst of chaos. God says I want to use you to make the world a better place. <clears throat> Can you say that this morning? Comment on somebody's comment. And say God is going to use you to make the world a better place. It says empower me Lord with the courage of Esther. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, who stepped up to bring change in her time. What did Esther do? Esther said, I'm going to change the world, even if it costs me my life, even if it doesn't make me feel comfortable. Many of you, the Lord is about to cause you to step outside of your comfort zone. Are you listening to me? And the moment you begin, are you listening to me? The moment you begin to step out in faith, God said everything is about to change for you. <clears throat> Fill me with your compassion of the good Samaritan, eager to uplift and to heal those around me. God says this is the season you're going to be the good Samaritan. There are some of you the Lord is about to bless you to be a giver and I'm not just talking about to your church. Yes, the church needs your help. Yes, the church needs your supply. But I'm talking about God is about to bless you in such a way that, listen, you're going to be more of a blessing to others that don't even go to your church. Watch this. Here's what I heard the Lord say that has never stepped foot in a church. The Lord said, I'm about to cause you to be a great, great blessing. Your level of influence is what's about to lead people to Jesus Christ. I see many of you blessing people financially and they're saying, what did you do? And you say, I just serve the Lord. What you mean, serve the Lord? Many of you, your wealth is about to bring people to Jesus Christ. And I know a lot of people are going to take that the wrong way and say, oh, well, it's all about money. No, it's not all about money. But your level of influence is about to be like that of those in the world. There's a reason why your child want to be like Beyonce. There's a reason why your child want to be like the next hottest rapper. Why? It's not because they can rap good. It's not because of what they're saying, but it's because of what they're displaying. And they're displaying a lifestyle that you don't have. Can I tell you right now that the kingdom of God is about to display a kingdom lifestyle that will not compare to the world. Glory to God. And your level of influence is what's about to bring people to Jesus Christ. As I reflect on Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I am reminded that through you, I can do all things. Come on, can you tell somebody that this morning? You can do all things. May my actions today inspire, uplift, and transform lives. That's what I'm praying for you today, that your actions will begin to transform lives. Let your light shine through me, illuminating the darkness with love, kindness, and positive change in Jesus' name. I decree and declare right now that things are about to change in a positive manner for you. Come on, I decree and set my faith into agreement with you right now that all things are working for your good. Come on, can you say that this morning? Type that in the comment section. All things are working for my good. And I decree that right now over your life. And I say that it must come to pass for you. In Jesus mighty name. Come on if you receive that impartation. I want you to type on the screen right now. I receive it. Let me know you receive it. Because God is about to blow your mind. And there is so much more that God has in store for you. And I'm telling you. Those of you that have connected with me in this season. People we about to make history. Because I'm telling you. The way God has me moving in this season. Is just completely different. You know, even the Lord has been really just downloading some things into my spirit uh, concerning the body of Christ, concerning the people of God. People, you're about to break down walls. Some of you, I'm telling you, the, the, the anointing is about to destroy the yoke of bondage off of your life. Stay connected. 
Continue to flow in the vein of the Holy Spirit and let the Lord Jesus lead and guide you through the Holy Spirit. Things are going to begin to happen for you. As I get ready to pray for you, I want to give you this invitation for those of you that's watching. Because I never just begin to assume everybody has arrived to a place. But if you're watching me this morning, you say, Pastor, I heard the word and I believe that a positive change needs to happen in my life. If you're listening to me right now, this is an opportunity for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. And there are some of you who say, well, I can give my life to Jesus a little later on. I'm not done living my life yet. I'm not done doing everything I want to do. Listen, you may not have the time to finish that. Why put off tomorrow what you can do today? But if you're watching me right now and you feel the pulling and the tugging of the Holy Spirit and you say, I want to make 100% sure that I'm going to heaven today because tomorrow is not promised to me. If that's true, I want you to type the word me on the screen. And here's the thing. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be ashamed because we're not here to embarrass you. We're here to help lead you to a savior that is able to do more than my preaching, more than my prophesying, more than anything that I can do. A savior that is more popular than my 310,000 followers on every single different platform that you are watching me on. We're talking about the savior of all of humanity who is very much concerned about you. Type the word me on the screen if you want to give your life to that Savior, that King. And I want to pray for you this morning. I see many of you going ahead and typing on the screen this morning. You're typing the word me there. I want you to pray this very simple prayer with me right now. Repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. Today I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that your son Jesus died for my sins. Lord, I believe that he was resurrected with all power in his hands. And so today, I open the door to my heart to you and I ask you to come into my life, come into my heart, come into my soul and save me today. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. And here's the good news for those of you that type me on the screen. Heaven is rejoicing just for you. Come on, can we put some hearts and lights on the screen for those that gave their life to Jesus, for those that said, I'm making 100% sure today that heaven is my place of eternity. I want you to go ahead and just send those hearts up, send those lights up, type a big amen on the screen, and let's celebrate those that gave their life to Jesus Christ on today. Let's welcome them, and we always say, find you a good Bible-based church, a good Bible-teaching church. Doesn't matter where you are, and let me just say this, if you are in Houston, Texas, I can let you know right now, uh, one of the greatest churches in Houston. Uh, we want you to join us here in Houston. Uh, maybe a lot of people say on TikTok that have came and visited our church that I did not even know you was in Houston. I pastor one of the greatest churches here in Houston that is thriving, that is growing, uh, that is loving and filled with some of the most amazing, amazing people on the planet. And so if you are in Houston or ever in Houston, join us at one of our worship service every Sunday, 11, Wednesday at 7 p.m., 5630 North Elridge Parkway right here in Houston. All you got to do is just look up Breakthrough. Harvest Church Houston and we would love to have you be a part of our worship experience all right and so definitely join us be with us and then those of you uh, that are connecting with us uh, I would definitely want to let you know other ways that you can follow and subscribe uh, and so definitely follow us if you have other social media platforms if you have Facebook you have TikTok you have Instagram you have YouTube uh, we're live on those platforms as well and so sometimes we're not able to get on every single platform sometimes technology just doesn't cooperate and so uh, some people uh, Facebook doesn't work right so they jump on YouTube and then you know sometimes TikTok doesn't go live they'll jump on Facebook or jump on YouTube and so make sure you follow and subscribe to all the social media platforms uh, at Pastor Troy King all right at Pastor Troy King uh, at, on Facebook on YouTube on TikTok and on Instagram so that way you can stay connected with me uh, definitely turn your notifications on if you have not turned your notifications on and whatever platform you are watching on right now uh, definitely you want to go ahead and follow on that page all right so don't just hit follow don't just hit like but make sure you go into your settings there by the like option and turn on your notifications hit that notification bell so that way that every time we go live you'll get notifications when we go live and again i'll be putting up the text number again as soon as everything is taken care of so that way you guys will be able to text me directly your most urgent prayer requests and i also want to let you guys know those of you that have become a kingdom paymaster uh, and those of you that don't know who, what that is, I'll share that a little bit later. We only talk about giving on Giving Friday, uh, but there are some of you that really supported and stood up on um, uh, 
uh, last giving Friday to help us. We still haven't reached our 100 yet, uh, Kingdom Paymasters. Uh, but those of you that have uh, made up in your mind to be a Kingdom Paymaster, I will be putting out a link uh, very soon for you to send me your name, uh, your email, your address, your phone number, so I can have access to you so you can be a part of the inner circle and begin to be a part of the things that I'm doing exclusively uh, for those that help me push the vision. Uh, Denise, the, the books will be going out tomorrow. So tomorrow we start back shipping the devotionals. Uh, they are coming in today. So we have UPS will be dropping off all the books today. And so those of you that have been patiently waiting on your book, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your time in the pr uh, time of us getting them printed. If those of y'all that's been with me for a while, know that this book has sold out uh, four times, I think four times, uh, already. And so if you would like to get it, this is the time to go ahead and reorder it because tomorrow shipping starts again, because they are scheduled to be delivered today. And so I'll put this on, uh, the screen for you guys as well. You can get it. Uh, Amazon hasn't got theirs yet. So you have to get it to pre get it again. You can go to, uh, bhclife.com or you can go to troykingministries.com. Again, that is uh, bhclife.com or you can go to troykingministries.com all right so somebody can type that on tiktok for me the websites where they can get it from so people can know how to go and get it and so uh definitely go ahead and get it it may sell out again for the fifth time uh because so many people have been asking about it again and it's just been a blessing to so many people and so i encourage you uh today go ahead and get it Get in front of the game because, again, they are being delivered on today. And so we'll be unboxing them today and preparing uh, for shipping on tomorrow. And so uh, those that we are shipping out tomorrow, give it about two to three days and three to three to four days in shipping. And so everybody should that has already ordered it should have it by Friday of this week uh, or before. For those of you that have already ordered your copy of the 365 day devotional. All right. Uh, and so thank you for your support. Again, all of my kingdom paid masters that are connecting with me, uh, subscribing and things like that. I definitely appreciate you guys helping me uh, because so many things have just became so expensive uh, just to begin to continue preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, through airways. Uh, just, just overall, you know, the enemy is making it hard and I'm not uh, really just saying those things just to be saying them. Uh, our internet bill, bill has increased uh, from $200 to up to $350 because the service that we was having before, and this is not just at our home studio, this is at our church as well. And so we, have to, we had to increase the home and we had to increase the church because the levels that we were getting all of a sudden just wasn't functioning the way they was needed to function. And there was a lot of dropping broadcasts, a lot of skipping in the broadcast. And, you know, it's just it's just a sign that we're living in the in the end time. Many of you heard me I released that word as it relates to things happening with technology. And so literally uh, I spoke this about three years ago that we'll be overpaying uh, for data and for packages and things that we're not really uh, getting the full benefits out of. And that's what we've been really experiencing. Some of you probably have been experiencing that as well in your own personal life where you're paying for something and not getting it. You know, you're paying for extra services on your phone and it's not working right. Uh, but yet the little bit that it is doing, you still need it. And so uh, we had to end up paying more to make it stronger because what used to be stronger is no longer stronger enough now. But these are things that the companies are not telling you, but these are things that the Lord has revealed to us in secret that we know that's going on. Uh, there's not much we can do about it, but pray. But nevertheless, uh, these are the things that we are appreciating so very much. Our kingdom pay masters and those that really support the ministry through stars, uh, through subscribing to the Facebook page, subscribing to the channels, all these different things that you do to help us take care of a lot of these high end budgets. We definitely appreciate it. And I'll say this, a lot of people reach out for help people. Please don't please understand we're trying to help as many people as we can, but we are not Bank of America. We cannot help every single person. And I think a lot of times when I come on and talk about all the people we have help, it opens up a door. And I mean, literally 20 people sending cash out requests. People, I can't just, listen, even though we help people, there's a legitimate way we have to do it. Uh, number one, we cannot give you cash directly. We have to begin to pay it to the corporation. That's IRS standard. Uh, and so any donations that have get, been being given to a ministry through seed, tie, uh, tithes, or offering uh, has to be accounted for. I can't just say I gave you $100 just because you asked for it. So it, it doesn't work that way. Things have to be documented. There's papers that have to be filled out. Uh, and so I'm not saying that we don't want to help people. 
people because we help a lot of people, but we have to do it in decency and in order, and we have to have the resource to do it. And unfortunately, uh, all the requests just came in this weekend uh, because I started asking for Kingdom Paymaster to help us. Uh, I mean, it was literally a load of people, and people, we cannot do it. And I'm sorry that you know our, our staff has to go and hit decline uh, because it overloads our cash app, and we can't see the people that's giving uh, and record properly and these types of things. So if you need assistance, you need to just email us, and we'll do our very best to help you uh, as best as we can based on the situation. But right now we're helping, uh, we've already made a dedication to try to help two people uh, that's living in hotels right now. So do know that the case that we help people on is based on the standard and the condition of the need. And so I believe we deal with the most critical needs first and then we go from there. Now I'm not saying your need is not critical, but we do try to serve people on a first come first serve basis and we just don't have it to do it for every single person. So we'll do the best we can, but this is why we, ask you to sow. We ask you to give. Become Kingdom Pay Master because you never know when you need the help and you need the support. And so I thank you all that are standing with me, that's helping us push the vision, that believe in this mission and believe in the vision. I thank God so very much for each and every one of you. So let's go ahead and take our communion. Don't forget about the conference that is coming up in June. Uh, those of you that's in Houston or plan to be with us in Houston, the conference is going to be June 28th through the 30th. This is the Breakthrough 2024 conference. And so we definitely want to encourage you to be a part of this great, great worship experience. Uh, you don't want to miss it. The power of the Lord is going to begin to move greatly. Yes, Mona, we're definitely praying for Israel as well. Some of you may have seen some things that was happening there about that on the news and also for Haiti. Uh, there's a lot of these different places, people that we got to begin to help and that we got to begin to uh, stand in the gap for. And so definitely be in prayer for Israel, be in prayer for Haiti, uh, all the things that's going on in those nations right now uh, and know that we are uh, really just standing in the gap for them through prayer and any type of support that we can yield to them as well. All right, so let's go ahead and let's take our communion this morning. Let's get our bread in our hand and let's decree and declare that we know what the body and the blood of Jesus Christ represents. And the Bible says as often as we eat it and as often as we drink it, we do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Yes, Jesus Lord, we definitely pray for America as well. We pray for the entire world, the entire nation at large because what's happening in all these other countries will be happening everywhere. So we definitely be praying uh, for the entire nation, the world, the uh, states of United States of America, all of these places that we represent and we make up, we pray for them in Jesus' name. And so let's take the bread in our hand. We decree and declare we're walking in divine health, divine healing, no sickness in our body, no pain in our body. And we decree and declare right now that the power of the Lord Jesus, the benefit of the broken body of Jesus is flowing into our bloodstreams, our organ, our tissues. And we receive every benefit now of this broken body of Jesus Christ. Let us all break and let us all eat together. Let's get the cup that represents the cup of blessings. And we say today that every benefit in this cup is flowing into our bodies. We say today no sickness, no disease, no pain, no infirmity, no attacks because when the enemy sees the blood, he has to pass over. And so today we thank the Lord for the Passover anointing. We thank him right now for the DNA of a champion that shall flow into our bodies, into our bloodstreams, into our organs. And we receive of every benefit today of this blood of Jesus. Let us all lift it and let us drink it together. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, let me see you putting some hearts and lights on the screen and decree and declare that it is working for you and it is done. Amen. And so I got to get ready to run here, folks. I got to get ready to shift. Kids getting ready to go to school. A lot of things we got to get done today. So let me pray over you. Release the blessing of the Lord. Father, we thank you right now for every prayer request that has been typed upon the comment sections. We thank you, Lord God, for divine health. We thank you for healing. We thank you for prosperity. We thank you for uh, opening major doors uh, and beginning to have mercy on those that need mercy. Granting every request that is being typed on this screen, those that need healing in their body, those that need settlements with court cases, those that need uh, clarity, need understanding, just need a better life. God, whatever they need, whatever they are typing on the screen, I pray that you answer their prayers by fire. And I say today, oh, Father God, that the blessing of the Lord is upon their life. They should do great great and mighty things for the kingdom and in this natural life as well. We speak the blessing and we release it upon their life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
and amen and amen. Well, God bless you all. May the Lord bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And the Lord willing, we will see you all tomorrow, the same time, same place, right here on Command Your Day. Be blessed. We love you. And we'll see you tomorrow.